wapi saba? Leo ni sabato ya tarehe mbili mwezi wa tano mwaka elfu mbili na ishirini na jina langu ni Joswin Bwambo ningependa kuwakaribisha katika masaa haya tunapomwabudu Mungu kupitia vyombo hivi ulipo hapo nyumbani karibuni mshiriki pamoja nasi sabato ya leo tuna vipindi mbalimbali ambavyo tumewaandalia tutaanza na shule ya sabato tutasoma lesoni pamoja lakini pia hata watoto hatujawasahau na pia kuna nyimbo za sifa na pia mahubiri ambayo yameandaliwa na watumishi wa Mungu ambao wako mbele zenu. Hebu sabato hii ya leo unaposikiliza mahubiri haya ukabarikiwe popote pale ulipo nyumbani na ukajifunze kitu kupitia maneno haya. Tuombe kufungua sabato ya leo. <coughs> mtakatifu, mtakatifu, mtakatifu baba ulieje mbinguni tunakushukuru tena kwa masaa haya ambayo umetubariki nayo umetulinda umetuongoza katika masaa haya ya asubuhi tunapoanza sifa kwa kukushukuru wewe na kusikiliza maneno yako siku ya leo hebu kila mmoja anaposikiliza mahubiri haya akabarikiwe popote pale alipo tunapokuhubiri wewe kupitia sifa nyimbo za sifa na mahubiri ya maneno kwa pamoja nasi watumishi wako wote wabariki ndilo ombi letu tukiwa na kushukuru amina Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. Happy Sabbath. Asante wale mnatuangalia pale nyumbani na wakaribisha katika sabato ya leo. Na sabato ya leo choristers wetu wale wanatuongoza upande wangu wa kulia ni dada wetu Josephine Mwambo waweza kusalimia. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Asante. Upande wangu wa kushoto tuko na pia Jessica Karibu Happy Saba Happy Day Asante na pia pale kwa pianist tuko na Joseph Mbwambo aweza kusalimia Happy Day akisaidiwa na fundi wa mitambo Shem Salimie Asante Tuweza kufungua vitabu zetu za nyimbo namba 68 na kabla hatujaimba huo wimbo sisi wote nauliza Josephine aweze kutuongoza kwa maombi. Karibu Josephine. Tuombe. Mtakatifu, mtakatifu baba ulieje mbinguni, tunakushukuru tena kwa asubuhi njema ambayo umetubariki nayo. Muda huu tunapoenda kukutukuza kwa nyimbo, hebu uwe pamoja nasi. Hata wale walio nyumbani wanapotusikiliza wakabarikiwe. Ndilo ombi letu tukiwa na kushukuru. Amina. Amen. Asante karibisha sisi wote wale mko nyumbani mnatuangalia katika runinga zenu fungue wimbo nambari 68 ambao unasema tusimame imara simame imara mwambani wakati wa janga la corona tuweze kusimama imara na Mungu wetu aweze kutuongoza na aweze kukuwa pamoja nasi tunaomba Mungu aweze kutulinda siku ya leo mmekaribishwa wote karibuni tusimame Umtete e mungu duniani Si Umtete mungu duniani Itapopepo kalizavuma Mwambani peke
unaofuata ni wimbo namba 158 158 umwendo gani nyumbani na wimbo huu unatukumbusha kwamba tupo safarini kuelekea mbinguni na umbali ambao upo kutoka safari hii sio mbali sana kwa hiyo tuwe tayari sisi wote Umwendo gani nyumbani nizia kani jibu usiku sasa waisha macheo karibu usiuzu nika kuimba wimbo namba 126 ambao unasema nina haja nawe dada jeska huo wimbo una uelewaje huu wimbo unanifundisha kuwa kila saa tunamhitaji Mungu tuna haja na Mungu kwanza iki kipindi cha ili janga tunamhitaji Mungu sana karibu nasi si dada jeska dada josephi na wewe huu wimbo ambao unasema nina haja nawe kila saa unakufundisha 
huu wimbo kila wakati ninapowimba najaribu kukumbuka ni namna gani tunamhitaji Mungu katika kila dakika kwenye dunia hii hakuna dakika ambayo tuko salama hata unapotembea unapolala unapoamka kila unapoamka lazima umshukuru Mungu kwa sababu kwa sababu yeye ndiye mpaji wa kila kitu na tunamhitaji kila saa kwa hiyo nina haja nawe kila saa nina haja nawe dada Jessica Asanti pia watazamaji wetu kwa hivyo ndugu na dada mtazamaji wimbo huu mimi nauelewa nina haja nawe kila saa wakati huu wa corona kumekuwa na janga la corona ninahitaji Mungu kila dakika kila dakika nahitaji Mungu na wewe pia wakati huu wakati wa kuhitaji Mungu wako kila wakati kwa hivyo tunapoenda kuimba wimbo huu tuimba na wewe utafakari maneno yako yaliyo yaliyo ndani ya katika wimbo huu na Mungu aweze kuwabariki
Wimbo huu unaofuata ni wimbo namba 46 46 Wimbo unaosema miguuni pake Yesu Ni mahali gani tena palipo bora kama sio miguuni pake Yesu Hebu tunapo wimbo huu wimbo huu tutafakari na tuangalie ni wapi pingine duniani ambapo tukikaa tuna amani kama sio miguuni pake Yesu Me sabato njema ni wakati mwingine mzuri tunaenda kujifunza kutoka kwa Biblia kupitia kwa lesson zetu tuko katika lesson ya tano na kabla tuanze kujifunza nataka niwajulishe wenye tutashiriki na wao katika kujifunza lesson ya leo uh, kuna daktari Karen naomba tusalimie Wana wa Mungu hamjambo Kuna Samson Happy Saba Kuna ndugu Eric wasafiri wa mbinguni hamjambo 
mada ya leo ni kwa maandiko pekee kwa maandiko pekee kabla tuanze kujadiliana na muomba daktari aweze kutuombe tuamini na tuombe baba na muumba wetu tuacha mbele sako masaa haya tunakushukuru kwa sababu ya nafasi ambao umetupatia siku ya leo siku njema ya sabato ili tuweze kucha pamoja na tuweze kuchifundisha kutoka kwa neno lako kutoka kwa Biblia. Mungu wa mbinguni tunapoenda kuongoza wana wako katika lesoni ya siku ya leo tunaomba Mungu wa mbinguni utupatie Roho Mtakatifu atuongoze nena nasi ututumie na nena na kila ndugu ambaye anatotasama kutoka nyumbani ni katika jina la Yesu tumeoma na kuamini. Amen. Amen. Kwa maandiko tu sola scriptura Uh, kwa kwanza somo letu nataka tusome fungu la kukarili ndugu Eric wa Ibrania 4:12 uh, fungu la sema kwamba maana neno la Mungu li hai tena li nguvu tena lina ukali kuliko upanga wao wote ukatao kuili tena la choma hata kuzigawanya nafsi na roho na viungo na mafuta yaliyomo ndani yake tena lije pesi kuyatambua mawazo na makusudi ya moyo. Daktari, unaweza tuambia kipi kuhusu somo hilo? Ah, tume tunavyoangalia ni kwamba uh, katika hii Waibrania 4:12 linatuonyesha ya kwamba neno la Mungu li hai tena lina nguvu ni kumaanisha ya kwamba neno la Mungu linafika katika mawazo na moyo ya binadamu linafika katika fikra setu neno la Mungu ndio linapenya ndani na kutuonyesha eh, makosa yetu neno la Mungu ndio linaweza kutuisha na kutengeneza na kutuongeresha eh, na ndani ili tuweze kupadilisha mawaso yetu Asante ndugu Samson Naam katika ki tukizo kuangalia katika utangulizi Man, kwa maandiko pekee sola scriptura na ukiweza kuangalia katika kifungu kimesema kuwa ma, uh, maana neno la Mungu li hai na ukiweza kuangalia mna hiyo sehemu ya mwisho ikimalizia inasema viungo na, ma, na mafuta yaliyomo ndani yake tena lije pesi kuyatambua mawazo na makusudi ya moyo langu kuongezea katika hii sehemu ni kuwa Biblia inatumikwa katika kuwa kama ndio mawazo yetu ndio makusudio ya binadamu na ikiwa binadamu anaweza kufikiri kando na yale ambayo yameandikwa katika Biblia basi hata kuwa ameenda sawa na mienendo ambayo Mwenyezi Mungu amefanya nini ameweza kutuangazia kuna masuala mengi yanazungumziwa katika hiyo sehemu lakini Biblia kwa maana ukiweza kuangalia mna picha ambayo imechorwa Biblia hapo juu na kuna upanga ambao umeekelewa juu ya hiyo Biblia na kweli ukiweza kuangalia hiyo bibili imelinganishwa kama upanga na maswali ambayo tutakuwa tukiangalia kwa mtazamaji wetu upanga je ni vipi ambavyo wanalinganishwa na biblia ni swali ndugu Eric uh, kwa madai kwamba kwa maandiko pekee inamaanisha kwamba uh, tunafaa tutegemee biblia kama njia ya kipekee ya mafundisho na madai ni kwamba sisi kama wa adventista wa kristo tunafaa kudumisha biblia kama mamlaka ya mwisho wa kimafundisho kumaanisha hatuna kitu kama wakristo tutasoma bila kuzingatia maandishi yaliyoandikwa kwenye biblia ili yaweze kutupa mwangaza wa kutenda yaliyo mema na kufanya yaliyo mazuri miongoni mwa macho ya Mwenyezi Mungu kwa hivyo hayo ndio ningependa kueleza kuhusiana na kwa maandiko pekee yani the scripture alone asante kwa utangulizi mzuri uh, maandiko ya kuna ukali kuliko panga wao wote ukatao kuwili tena la choma hata kuzagawanya nafsi na roho na viungo na mafuta yaliyomo ndani yake tena lije pesi kuyatambua mawazo na makusudi ya moyo biblia ama maandiko ndio peke yake yanaweza kutusaidia kuchunga yale ambayo tunastahili kuyafanya ni kama kichungu Ndiposa ukisoma fungu ambalo linafuata linasema Biblia ukishasoma Biblia na kuielewa basi inakuacha inakuacha 
ukiyafanya maneno ama mambo yaliyo mazuri peke yake katika wiki hii tutasoma ama tutaangazia vipengele tofauti tofauti uh, kama maandiko kama kanuni inayotawala umoja wa maandiko uh, uwazi wa maandiko maandiko ufafanua maandiko na baadaye tutamalizia kusema biblia ndio peke yake ya kutuongoza katika maisha haya tuende katika sehemu ya uh, ingine inayosema maandiko kama kanuni inayotawala Mwalimu Maandiko kabla, kama kanuni inayotawala ndugu Samson kidogo kabla ya kuendelea yeah. katika utangulizi mna sehemu ambayo ninafikiri ni muhimu tuweze kuiguzia ambapo inasema kuwa ni nini hasa kinachokitutenganisha sisi kati ya pro, wa protestani na warumi yani wa katholiki na ikiwemo hapo mwanzo unaweza kuangalia katika historia kulingana na masuala ya dini tunaona kuwa wakatholiki ndio waliokuwa wamechukua nafasi kubwa ya kidini hasa na kuwafundisha watu na ambapo ilikuwa ikiangalia mafundisho yao walikuwa wameyakita katika kwa ile lugha ya kimombo tunasema the traditions na na amri zao hasa ambazo walikuwa wamezitengeneza ambazo wanazita ni za kanisa lakini ndipo tuliipata mna baadhi ya waprotestanti ambao walichipuka kutokana na hilo kanisa na wakatumikwa katika kufanya nini katika kutueleza ama katika kujifundisha misingi ya Biblia huku wakitumika Biblia na Biblia pekee yake andiko baada ya andiko katika kutafsiri imani yao na ndipo tunapata sisi kama waadventista tumeweza kuchipuka kutokana na hiyo sehemu lakini tukiangalia tangu mwanzo Mungu kuumba ulimwengu kanisa takatifu limekuepo na ikiwa Mungu amelikita kuwa ili kanisa lazima liweze kujikita katika misingi ya kujifundisha Biblia kama kielekezo cha kumjua yeye Mwenyezi Mungu na Mwenyezi Mungu pekee. Labda hilo ndio ninge. Asante kwa kuongeza maandiko kama kanuni inayotawala. Ndugu Eric, tusomee wa Korinto wa kwanza. Ina. Uh, fungu la sita. Wa Korinto wa kwanza nne fungu la sita. Paulo anasema kwamba basi ndugu mambo hayo nimeyafanya kwa mfano wa mimi na Apollo kwa ajili yenu ili kwamba kwa mfano wetu mpate kujifunza kutokupita yale yaliyoandikwa ili mmoja wenu asijivune kwa ajili ya huyu kinyume cha mwenziwe narudia basi ndugu mambo hayo nimeyafanya kuwa mfano wa mimi na Apollo kwa ajili yenu ili kwamba kwa mfano wetu mpate kujifunza kutokupita yale yaliyoandikwa ili mmoja wenu asijivune kwa ajili ya huyu kinyume cha mwenziwe. Asante. Uh, daktari Biblia imetueleza kuwa maneno yote ambayo yameandikwa katika uh, Biblia ni ya manufaa kwetu. Lakini tumeagizwa kuwa uh, tukiweza kuyasoma tusiweze pia kupita yale ambayo yameandikwa. Hebu tueleze kidogo juu ya hilo jambo. Asante tunapoangalia katika Biblia tunaona ya kwamba eh, mwanzo tumesema ya kwamba kama wa Adventist wa Sabato eh, Biblia ndio ambayo ina mamlaka yote na kila jambo ambalo tunaangalia lazima tuliangalie katika kanuni ya Biblia na tunapoangalia katika usomaji wa Biblia na ufafanusi wa Biblia eh, kuna mambo mengine eh, ambayo kama akiolojia ya kibiblia au historia ambayo inaweza tusaidia katika kuelewa na kueleza eh, vipengele vingine vya Biblia na pia kuna eh, sayansi ambayo eh, inaweza kutusaidia eh, na kuelewa eh, Biblia lakini lazima tuelewe ya kwamba akiolojia ya kweli na sayansi ya kweli ni ile ambayo inaenda sambamba na Biblia na tunapokuwa na taswishi yoyote lazima tuweke mamlaka eh, ya Biblia juu kwa sababu hiyo ndio neno la Mungu na hiyo ndio iko na mamlaka ya mwisho katika eh, maisha ya Adventist wa Sabato. Eh, asante. Ndugu Samzo. Uh, daktari ameeleza kuwa Biblia iko na mamlaka ya mwisho. Je, dini, uzoefu na vitu kama hivyo 
tutavitumia aje ili tuweze pia kuvileta katika masomo ama mafundisho yetu ya kibiblia kwa hivyo dini na uzoefu kumbuka uzoefu imara upo katika biblia na dini misingi yake ni biblia ikiwa tutaenda kando na hayo ambayo yamezungumziwa basi tutakuwa tumefanya nini tumekiuka yale ambayo biblia inafanya nini inatueleza kumbuka lengo letu kuu katika biblia ama leseni ya leo ni kuweza kuangalia biblia peke yake yana sola scriptura katika kufanya nini katika kutuelekeza mafunzo hasa ya nini ya imani na dini yetu kwa hivyo ikifikia katika masuala jinsi na namna ambavyo uh, mwalimu aliyetangulia anasema kuwa sayansi hayo yote yamekitwa katika misingi ya nini ya biblia ikiwa yatajiinua zaidi ya biblia basi yatakuwa amefanya nini yatakuwa yamepotoka ndio pale pale mwandishi anasema maandiko pekee ndio bwana wa kweli na mkuu wa maandishi na mafundisho ya ya dunia. Kwa hivyo ndipo kimezungumziwa hapa. Asante ndugu Eric. Naam. Uh, katika um, yale ama vyanzo vingine kama vile uzoefu wa kidini, fikira ya binadamu kunaweza kuwa ama kunaweza tokea mgongano. Iki, ikiwa ni hivyo tunastahili tufanye nini? Ah, uh, misingi tunafaa kujua kwamba Uh, fikra za binadamu imani ya binadamu zefu wao au na maana iwapo binadamu afuatilii kanuni za kibiblia kwa hivyo tunapoeleza ni kwamba uh, katika maisha ya Ukristo tunafaa kuelewa kwamba biblia ndio mwongozo wa maisha ya binadamu kwa hivyo imani zetu fikra zetu na tamaduni zetu pia aziwezi kuwa na maana bila biblia na tuliposoma juma lililopita ni kwamba uh, imani mila na desturi hazina misingi katika maisha ya binadamu bila nini biblia kumaanisha tunapoangalia maswala ya imani mila uh, desturi kwamba imani ubadilika kila wakati yani culture is so dynamic but neno la Mwenyezi Mungu namna lilivyoandikwa bado limebaki kuwa katika ile hali asilia ya uandishi wake kumaanisha maisha ya binadamu uemea sana kutumia biblia kama njia mwafaka ya kufanikisha malengo ya huyu binadamu ili kuelewa zaidi kuhusiana na biblia na Mwenyezi Mungu binafsi ndio maana sasa hiyo kanuni inafaa zingatue zaidi katika maisha ya Ukristo Asante umoja wa maandiko Ukisoma katika Timotheo wa pili tatu kumi na sita inasema kuwa maandiko yote yote e, ni jambo la kusisitiza pale maandiko yote ni pumzi ya Mungu kwa hakuna lolote ambalo limeandikwa katika Biblia ambalo sio pumzi ya Mungu daktari tuelezee kidogo kuna wale ambao wana ukiwaelezea wanasema hilo linatoka katika agano la kale ama hilo liko katika enzi zile zilipita hata kama liko kwa Biblia utawashauri aje Asante kwa swali hilo nzuri ni kwamba tunapoangalia Biblia kama neno la Mungu agano la kale na agano chipya e, yote iko sawa na vile tumeona katika hiyo e, e, Timotheo wa pili e, kumi na sita na nafikiri kama ndugu Eric anaweza tusomea ili tuweze kuweka msingi katika hiyo kipengele uh, Timotheo wa pili mlango wa tatu, fungu la 16 nasema kwamba kila andiko lenye pumzi ya Mungu lafaa kwa mafundisho ya Mungu lafaa kwa mafundisho na kwa kuonya watu makosa yao na kwa kuongoza na kuadhibisha katika haki Asante ya kwamba kila andiko lina pumzi ya Mungu kwa hivyo iwe ni agano la kale iwe ni agano chipya kila andiko lina pumzi ya Mungu ni kumaanisha ya kwamba Biblia haikuja kwa mawaso ya binadamu na hakuna kipengele hata kimoja ambao unaweza sema imetoka katika mawaso ya binadamu bali ni pumzi ya Mungu na kwa hivyo yote ni ya manufaa ya kutufundisha ya kutuadhibisha na kuturekebisha ili kututayarisha kwa kufanya yaliyo mapenzi ya Mungu na unapoangalia katika eh, Petero wa pili moja 20 na 21 inatuambia ya kwamba neno la Mungu 
ambayo eh, ni ya unabii ilikuja ikiongozwa na Roho Mtakatifu. Kwa hivyo haikuja kwa mawaso ya binadamu ilikuja kwa kuongozwa na Roho Mtakatifu. Na kwa hivyo kama neno la Mungu liliongozwa na Roho Mtakatifu iwe eh, agano la kale iwe agano chipya lote ni manufaa eh, yetu sisi tuweze kulitumia na naweza kutuongoza katika maisha yetu na tunapoangalia tutaangalia katika mfano wa Yesu Kristo alipokuwa katika dunia hii yeye alichukuliaje neno la agano la kale na tunaangalia ya kwamba anapoangalia katika eh, Isaya anasema ya kwamba neno hili aliposoma katika kitabu cha Isaya akiwa katika sinagogi alisema ali ya kwamba neno hili limetimia leo hii mbele ya macho yenu ni kumaanisha kwamba Yesu alichukulia eh, neno la agano la kale eh, kama lenye liko na nguvu na ni neno ambao ni pumsi ya Mungu kwa hivyo sisi ambao ni wacha wa Mungu lazima tufuate muongozo ambao ni muongozo wa Yesu Kristo kumaanisha ya kwamba eh, agano la kale na agano chipya yote ni pumsi ya Mungu na inafaa na ina mamra ka, katika maisha yetu na hiyo ndio mwongozo wetu Asante eh, ndugu Samson je waandishi wa Biblia wao wanaamini umoja wa Biblia ni swali nzuri na hasa nafikiri ni tatizo ambalo hata limekututukumba sisi kama Adventista kwa maana mna baadhi ya wale wasomi ambao wanajaribu kuchukulia kuwa vitabu vya Paulo ndivyo vinachukuliwa mwemko zaidi kushinda vitabu vingine na ndipo ambapo inatukosea tunaenda kutunakosea kwa maana mna baadhi ya wahubiri uh, ambao wanasimama katika sinagogi ama katika madhabahu na kusema kuwa Paulo amesema ni kwa imani na imani pekee uh, na ndipo tunapaswa hata basi atupo chini ya sheria bali tuko kwa nini tuko kwa neema ya Mwenyezi Mungu na ni maandiko ambayo wanasistizia ni ya Paulo na kwa kweli ni kwa kupotoshwa tu Paulo mwenyewe ukiweza kuangalia katika kitabu cha Warumi tatu mstari wa kumi hadi kumi na nane tunaona yeye mwenyewe akinuku agano la kale ikiwemo vitabu ambavyo alivyo vinukumu na saburi uh, 14 mstari wa pili na ndipo pale ukiona akianza utangulizi wake anaanza kwa kusema imeandikwa Biblia imeandikwa na ukisoma kwenda chini utaangalia kwa kweli yale ambaye ananuku yameandikwa katika kitabu kwa mfano mna muhubiri 720 mna saburi 14 mstari wa pili na wa tatu hata uh, tano, tisa na Isaya tisa na saba na nane kumaanisha kuwa hao waandishi wa agano jipya wote ikiwemo Yesu Kristo waliamini katika agano jipya na ndipo ili tuweze ndipo uh, mwalimu wenzangu aliposema kuwa uh, uh, katika kitabu cha uh, Watimothea wa pili tatu kumi na sita kuwa biblio ni, ma, eh, ni maandiko eh, ni, yani maandiko yote ni pumzi ya Mungu na yanafaa katika mafundisho kutuonya ikiwa kana kwamba unasoma sehemu moja ili kwa makusudio yako mwenyewe uache sehemu nyingine basi utakuwa umekosea kwa hivyo au andishi ama uh, waliandika agano jipya wote wanaikubaliana kwa biblia kwa pamoja na kuchukulia maswali yote kwa uzito na kuyakubali kama mafundisho ambayo Mwenyezi Mungu anataka sisi wenyewe tuweze kujifunza. Asante. Asante. Uh, mwalimu Eric. Chinzi ndugu amesema kuna wale uchukua sehemu moja wakiishika hiyo ndio wanafuata. Uh, kwa mfano tu kuna wale wanasoma katika kitabu cha Timotheo kuwa Paulo alimshauri uh, Timotheo aweze kutumia uh, vileo. Na wanaishika hivyo na wanaenda wanakunywa pombe na wanasema Biblia imesema. Je, unaweza washauri aje watu wa aina hiyo wenye wanachukua sehemu moja tu na wanasema hiyo ndiyo tunafuata, mengine hawataki kujua. Uh, Asante kwa hilo swali. Labda kabla ya kujibu hilo swali, ningependa nisome sehemu moja ya lesson yetu. Waandishi wa Biblia walichukulia maandiko kuwa kitu kizima kisichoweza kutenganishwa ambapo mada kuu zinaendelezwa zaidi. Hakuna utengano kati ya agano la kale na agano jipya. Agano jipya halina injili wala dini mpya. 
agano la kale nafunuliwa katika agano zipya na agano zipya limejengwa juu ya agano la kale kwa hivyo magano kwa haya mawili yana uhusiano wa kuangaziana ah uh, ilo swali la mtu kusoma fungu moja labda na kulifanya kazi alifai katika maisha ya mtu ambaye ni Mkristo Biblia inasema wazi kwamba uh, tunapoangalia vitabu vyake vyote 66 ah uh, agano zipya uh, likiwa na 27 agano la kali kuwa na 39 inamaanisha kwamba hatuwezi kuwa na uelewa zaidi kabla ya kuangazia sehemu zote za Biblia kumaanisha fungu moja laweza kukupa mwanga fulani lakini wapo utashughulikia hilo fungu na kusoma fungu lingine utaelewa zaidi kile waandishi walichomaanisha kumaanisha tusiwe wa Kristo wa kusoma kazi yetu juju tusome kwa kina tuweze kuelewa zaidi ni kipi hasa kinafaa kufanyika ili kuokoa maisha yetu na tuwe mifano uh, bora zaidi katika maisha ya Kristo hilo ndilo ningesema kuhusiana na hilo kwa hivyo kumaanisha kusoma sehemu moja ICD inaofaa tutafute sehemu nyingine ambayo inashughulikia mada kama ile ili kuleta ule usawa ama umoja katika fungu asante mwalimu uwazi wa maandiko Uh, daktari kuna wale watu wanasoma uh, tuseme unabii uh, kipengele fulani wanapata kuwa hawezi kukielewa kwa uwazi pia kuna wale wanasoma uh, maandiko wanaweza soma sehemu moja walinganisha na nyingine waseme iko na utata fulani je katika uandishi wa biblia kuna utata uh, asante sana swali njema hilo Uh, ni kwamba uh, uh, unapoangalia katika Biblia hakuna utata wowote. Biblia imepeanwa na Mungu na imepeanwa kwa uh, kupitia kwa Roho Mtakatifu na yule ambaye anaweza tufundisha Biblia ni Roho Mtakatifu. Kwa hivyo hatutasoma Biblia bila tunasoma kitabu chochote, lazima tusome kwa unyenyekevu, kwa maombi ili tuweze kuelewa. Na unapoangalia katika uh, Petero wa pili moja uh, uh, mbili fungu la tisa inatuelezea vizuri ya kwamba e, waumini wote Biblia inachukulia waumini wote kama e, watu ambao ni ukuhani wa waumini wote. Ni kumaanisha ya kwamba Mungu amekusudia watoto waweze kuelewa Biblia na watu wote waweze kuelewa Biblia. Na ni kumaanisha ya kwamba hatuitaji muhubiri wa ajabu ili aje kutuelezea Biblia inamaanisha nini kila mmoja wetu amepewa nafasi na Mwenyezi Mungu tuweze kumtafuta kwa kunyenyekea na kwa kuomba na kwa kusoma Biblia na yeye uh, kupitia kwa Roho Mtakatifu anaweza kutupatia kuelewa Biblia kwa undani na pira tasuishi lolote kwa hivyo tunapokuwa na utata wowote tunapokuwa na jambo ambalo hatuelewi ni kuomba Mungu na kuchadiliana uh, na wenzetu lakini la muhimu ni kuomba Roho Mtakatifu atuongoze na hiyo itatupatia kuelewa kwa Biblia saidi. Asante mwalimu. Uh, ndugu Samson, najua katika uandishi watu wameandika vitabu mbalimbali mbali, kuhusu uh, vipengele mbalimbali mbali, uh, kuhusu maisha. Kwa mfano tu uh, kutumia pesa. Watu wameandika uh, chizi wanadamu sisi tunaweza tumia pesa vizuri watu wengi wameandika juu ya hayo afya ndoa watu wengi wameandika je katika biblia kuna waandishi tofauti uh, kuli, uh, wameandika biblia kuliko wale ambao waliandika hii biblia ambayo tunatumia ni swali nzuri lile ambalo tunapaswa kuelewa waandishi ambao waliongozwa na Mwenyezi Mungu katika kuandika Biblia wameweza kuwekwa kwa wazi. Na uh, kulingana na au waandishi wengine licha ya historia na mikuta za tofauti tofauti inabadilika kulingana na jinsi na namna ambavyo tunavyoishi lakini wale waandishi uh, wanayoandika ya bado yataoana ama kwenda sambamba na yale ameandikwa kwa Biblia ikiwa kuwa wale waandishi eh, ambao wameandika Biblia ni wale wale tu ambao walielekezwa na Roho Mtakatifu ambao wamefunuliwa kwa njia ya kipekee ambao wameelezwa kwa Biblia ambao Mwenyezi Mungu amewadhibitisha na kuainuisha 
Kumbuka Biblia imesema kuwa na Mungu hataweza kutupa vipawa vya kila aina. Na ikiwa kana kwamba aliwapa hao wanafunzi na pamoja na waandishi wengine kuandika hivi vitabu basi ni wale waletu. Ikiwa kuna wengine watatukia katika uh, uh, jinsi na namna ambavyo muda unazidi uh, kusonga ama jinsi na namna ambavyo mikutano inakuwa tofauti basi wataandika tu chini ya wale waandishi ambao waliongozwa na nani na Roho Mtakatifu. Kwa hivyo hatuwezi sema mna hata mtume uh, Sulaimani mwenyewe anasema kuwa amna kitu kipya chini ya jua. Kumaanisha yale ambayo yameandikwa yalikuepo tangu sasa zamani. Kwa hivyo amna kitu kingine ambacho ni kuongezea tu kulingana na utofauti wa mikutadha ama wa jinsi na namna ambavyo tunavyoishi lakini bado Biblia na jinsi na namna ambavyo Roho Mtakatifu alivyoongoza inasalia vivyo hivyo. Asante. Uh, ndugu uh, Eric katika hii uh, dunia watu usoma vitabu kwa nia tofauti tofauti. Uh, kwa mfano tu watu waenda shuleni kusoma ili wapate uh, elimu, wapate uzoefu wa lugha, waweze kupata kazi, maarifa, vitu kama hivyo. Tunaposoma Biblia malengo yetu ni yapi? Ah uh, swali zuri mwalimu. Uh, Biblia tunaelewa kwamba ni kitabu kitakatifu sana. Na akikuandikwa na binadamu uh, wa kawaida ila binadamu walioandika Biblia walikuwa ni waandishi speciali. We can say they were special writers eh? Kwa kuwa hao waandishi hawakuamka siku moja na kuwa na labda madhumuni ya kwanza kuandika kazi bila kutafakari ni kipi kinafaa kuandikwa. Kwa hivyo katika kuandika kazi waliandika wakiongozwa na Roho Mtakatifu. Kumaanisha yale ambayo tunasoma sasa hivi ni kwamba hao waandishi walioandika kazi ya Biblia waliandikwa waliandika wakiongozwa na Roho Mtakatifu kinyume na waandishi chipukizi wanaoandika masuala mbalimbali mbali, wakisukumwa na misukumo kutoka moyoni mwao. Kwa mfano unapangalia masuala yanayozidi kufanyika katika mataifa yote sasa hivi. Asa kwa sasa kuna janga la corona sio? A ili janga mtu anaezamua aanze kuandika hiyo kazi. Anapanza kuandika hiyo kazi kuna lengo fulani ye binafsi ako nalo na angependa kulitimiza ilo lengo lake. Lakini tunapangalia Biblia tunaona haya maandishi yamekuepo kutoka mwanzo na yapo hayabadiliki na hayatabadilika kama kumaanisha kuna uspeshali fulani katika kazi ya Mwenyezi Mungu uh, Biblia ni kazi speciali ni kazi ya maana katika maisha ya binadamu na waandishi wake waliongozwa na Roho Mtakatifu ili kuandika hiyo kazi Asante kwa ufupi Uh, maandiko yanatuelekeza kumjua ya Mungu na zaidi ya hapo yanatusaidia kupitia kwa Yesu Kristo ambaye Mungu alituma tuweze kupata wokovu uh, maandiko ufafanua maandiko maandiko ufafanua maandiko maandiko yenyewe yanajieleza daktari tupe tu kisa hata kimoja ya kutusaidia kuelewa kuwa maandiko ujifafanua Asante uh, sana. Yeah. Uh, tunapoangalia maandiko ya Biblia uh, kwa ufafanusi tunaona ya kwamba ukitaka kuelewa Biblia vizuri na muongozo uh, ambao tumepewa ni kwamba Biblia inatieleza yenyewe unapopata fungu moja unalinganisha na fungu lingine na unapata uh, kuelewa sawa na tunapoangalia katika uh, kisa ambacho ambacho naenda kuwasimulia Naomba ndugu Eric aweze kufungulia katika Luka uh, 24 fungu la 27 na 44 na 45 na 45 uh, na 5. tunaangalia hapa kisa ambacho uh, ni kisa cha Yesu Kristo wakati alikuwa amekufa na ame, amefufuka amepatana na wanafunzi wake uh, ndugu kama umefika hapo uweze kusomea Luka mtakatifu Uh, mlango wake wa 24 fungu la 27 44 na 45 shina saba yasema kwamba akaanza kutoka Musa na manabii wote akaweleza katika maandiko yote mambo yaliyomhusu ye mwenyewe uh, 44 kisha akawaambia ayo ndiyo maneno yangu niliyowaambia nilipokuwa nikali pamoja nanyi na ya kwamba 
ni lazima atimizo yote yaliyoandikwa katika Torati ya Musa na katika manabi na Zaburi. Arobena tano ndipo akawafunulia akili zao wapate kuelewa na maandiko. Asante unapoangalia katika kisa hicho ni kwamba Yesu Kristo baada ya kufufuka alikutana na wanafunzi wake wawili e, wakielekea Emau kutoka Yerusalemu na walikuwa wakijadiliana na akapata aka kuwaeleza katika maandiko kutoka kwa Torati ya Musa na manabii na katika eh, eh, saburi tu ya maandiko ambayo yalikuwa yanamlenga yeye na kuonyesha vile maandiko haya yalikuwa yametimia katika maisha yake na unapokuja katika fungu la ya 44 anawaelezea ya kwamba haya ndio niliyowaeleza wakati nilikuwa pamoja nanyi kumaanisha kwamba Yesu Kristo alitumia maandiko eh, ya agano la kale kueleza yale ambayo yalikuwa yametimia katika maisha yake na katika 45 anatuonyesha ya kwamba eh, yote yalikuwa yametimia na akawafungua mawaso yao ili waweze kuelewa kwa hivyo Mungu anakusudia ana ya kwamba tuweze eh, kuelewa eh, tunapoangalia fungu moja tunaangalia fungu lingine linatupatia mtiririko na linaweza kutieleza na kufafanua fungu lingine na tunaelewa kupitia kwa mfano huo ambao Yesu Kristo alitupatia. Asante uh, ndugu Samson. Mbona tuache maandiko yajifafanue yenyewe? Ni swali nzuri mbona tusiache maandiko yajifafanue yenyewe? Sababu ambayo tunaiacha ukiweza kuangalia katika kitabu cha Isaya 28 mstari wa kumi inasema hivi huku kidogo kule kidogo linganisha huku na kule kwa hivyo Mwenyezi Mungu yeye mwenyewe ili katika kuangalia hata ameweza kusisitiza ukiangalia mtume Paulo anazidi kutueleza kuwa tuweze kutumia Biblia ili tukombe kama ni mada ambayo tumeweza kuchagua kama ni wafu tuchague kifungu hapa vifungu vyote ambavyo vinatumikwa katika kueleza kuhusu hiyo mada tuvitafute ili kuelewa zaidi kuhusu Mwenyezi Mungu anataka nini. Kwa hivyo bila kuweza kulinganisha baada ya kifungu baada ya kingine basi tutakuwa tumekosa ule ufaafu hasa ambao unahitajika katika kuelewa kile kifungu. Asante ndugu Eric. Ndio tuweze basi kuacha maandiko ya jifafanue yenyewe lazima tusome Biblia vizuri. Ni chinzi ipi tutaisoma Biblia vizuri? Uh, kabla kujibu hilo swali tunafaa kuelewa kwamba kulingana mtume Paulo amesema kwamba maandiko yote yali yaliyotangulia kuandikwa yaliandikwa kufundisha sisi. Hivyo basi tunapaswa kusoma yote yaliyosemwa na maandiko kuhusu mada usika. Swali ni ni namna ipi kama Wakristo tutaweza kusoma Biblia na tuweze kuelewa. Iwapo atuwezi elewa kauli kwamba Biblia iliandikwa kwa ajili ya binadamu bila shaka ara tukisoma Biblia atuwezi elewa. Kwa hivyo kabla ya kuanza kusoma hiyo Biblia tunafaa kuwa na ule uaminifu katika maombi baada ya kuelewa ule uaminifu katika maombi tuweze kujikita katika usomaji tukijua kwamba tunapokuwa na uaminifu bila shaka neno la Mwenyezi Mungu tunapolisoma tunaelewa zaidi na atatusaidia zaidi katika maisha yetu kwa hivyo kuwa na uaminifu na maombi unaposoma neno ukiwa na ule mtazamo wa unyenyekevu na utii katika hakika utaza matunda mengi. Kwa hivyo ili kuelewa zaidi kusoma Biblia vizuri, tunafaa kuamini katika maombi, tuwe na ule unyenyekevu ili tunaposoma neno tuweze kuelewa na tuweze kupata matunda mengi zaidi katika usomaji wa Biblia. Asante. Sola Scriptura na Ellen G. White. Um, wiki iliyopita tuliweza kusoma Isaia 8:20 ikatuagiza kuwa ni kwa sheria na ushuhuda basi kama tuwezi naenda enenda kwa hayo nuru haipo ndani yetu na tumejifunza kuwa ni kwa maandiko pekee tunaweza elewa yale tunastahili kuyaelewa kama wanadamu uh, tukiwa katika ulimwengu lakini kuna mwandishi mmoja ambaye tunasoma vitabu vyake sana kama wa adventista ambaye anaitwa Ellen G. White. Je, daktari, unaweza mueleza aje huyu mwandishi? Uh, asante sana. 
tunapoangalia eh, katika maandishi ya dada Ellen White eh, tunaangalia ya kwamba eh, maandishi haya yamepeanwa ili kutuongoza kurudi kwa Biblia unapoangalia katika hiyo isaya ambao eh, umenukuu eh, nane ishirini ni, ni kusema ya kwamba kama hawaneni kulingana na neno hili ni kwamba hakuna mwanga ndani yao na kwa hivyo tunaangalia maandiko ya dada White pia tuangalie kam, kwamba yeye ananena kulingana na Biblia na kama ananena kulingana na Biblia basi kuna mwanga hapo yeyote ambaye ananena kinyume cha Biblia ama hendi zambamba na Biblia basi huyo tunaweza sema ya kwamba maandiko yake sio sawa tunapoangalia vitabu vingi ambavyo vimeandikwa na dada White Unaona ya kwamba uh, ukisoma katika Great Controversy, ukisoma katika Testimonies to the Church, anatuelekeza ya kwamba yeye maandiko yake yanaturudisha tuweze kurudi kwa Biblia. Kwa hivyo tunapoweka msingi sio kwamba tunasoma vitabu za Dada White ili iwe ndio kanuni yetu. Inatuelekeza na kuturudisha katika Biblia ili tuweze kusimama katika Biblia. Na kwa hivyo ni kusema ya kwamba sisi kama waadventista wa Sabato msingi wetu mamlaka yote yako katika Biblia. Na katika maandishi ya dada White yote mamlaka yako katika Biblia na amesema mwenyewe na kunukuu ya kwamba maandiko yake hayakuja kubadilisha ama kuwa badala ya Biblia pali ni kuturudisha katika Biblia na kwa hivyo Biblia ndio kanuni ya waadventista wa Sabato. Asante ndugu Samson tupe tu kisa kimoja ambacho uh, kitatuelekeza kuwa dada White anatuelekeza kwa Biblia. Ha. Katika kisa kimoja mimi ningependa tu kunuku. Ukiweza kuangalia katika kitabu cha Adventist Advent Review and the Sabbath Herald ambaye imeandikwa January 2019 or, uh, 1903 anasema hivi Nuru ndogo ya kuwaongoza wanaume na wanawake kwenye nuru kubwa. Yaani kumaanisha kuwa yale maandishi ambayo ameweza kuyaandika kigezo kikuu ni kuweza kutuelekeza. Hiyo ni nuru ndogo tu. Na nuru ndogo ikiwa inatuelekeza kwa ile nuru kubwa ambaye nuru ndogo ni vitabu vyake ambavyo vinatuelekeza kwa nuru kubwa ambayo ni nini? Ni Biblia. Na ndipo baada anasistiza anasema kuwa sola scriptura yani tusome tu biblia na biblia pekee katika kama mafundisho ya kukita imani yetu sisi kama nini wa kristo wa sabato uh, ndugu eric hizi vitabu ama hivi vitabu vya dada wai ni muhimu kweli kuvisoma uh, asante mwalimu kwa hilo swali uh, swali ni ni bora kusoma hivi vitabu ambavyo dada white ameviandika jibu langu ni nam. Uh, dada white anapandika anatuelekeza kwamba tunafaa kusoma biblia kuelewa zaidi hata kabla kuelewa maandiko yake bina binafsi kumaanisha yeye binafsi anajua kwamba biblia ni muhimu zaidi lakini mbona tusome vitabu vyake vinatuelekeza ili kuelewa zaidi kuhusiana na neno hapa mwandishi anatuambia kwamba kuanzia hiyo maandishi yake yanapaswa kuthaminiwa yana uvuvio sawa na ule waliokuwa nao waandishi wa kibiblia lakini yana matumizi tofauti na yale ya biblia yani maandishi yake dada white yana ule usawa fulani lakini si usawa zaidi eh? uh, na wale waandishi walioandika biblia le, lake ni kwamba ni tofauti kidogo kivipi maandishi yake ni nyongeza tu kwenye yale maandiko lakini yako chini ya maandiko matakatifu. Kwa hivyo ile kazi anaandika si kazi ambayo imejikamilisha, ni kazi ambayo inakamilishwa zaidi na Biblia. Yaani ni nyongeza tu ya maandiko yale kwa nini? Biblia. Tunaelewa kwamba waandishi wa Biblia waliongozwa na Roma takatifu. Walipongozwa waliandika kulingana na namna Mungu alivyotaka waandike hiyo kazi. Hakuna mtu alijamlea kuandika kazi kwa misingi yake binafsi. Kwa hivyo huyu dada White anapoandika kazi yake anatumia Biblia kama kigezo kikubwa zaidi katika kazi yake. Kumaanisha ili kuelewa zaidi kazi zake ndio maana unaposoma vitabu vyake ni vyema kama Mkristo uwe na Biblia yako karibu 
ili unaposoma unarejelea Biblia ambayo ni kitabu takatifu kilichoandikwa na waandishi waliongozi na Roma takatifu kutoka Mwenyezi Mungu. Asante. Kwa ufupi kama kungekuwa na Biblia basi hata dada waite angeweza kuandika chanya ameandika. Naam. Kwa kumalizia uh, mwalimu Kale tuelezee uh, tu jambo moja lenye unataka tujue kutoka mafunzo ya wiki. Uh, asante ndugu ambaye yuko nyumbani lile ambao ningesema asubuhi uh, ya leo uh, siku ya sabato ni kwamba uh, Mungu anatuelekeza tuweze kuangalia Biblia kama yenye mamlaka na anatuambia ya kwamba tunaweza kupata kuelewa zaidi tutakapo kuwa wasomi wa Biblia tukinyenyekea na tukiomba Roho Mtakatifu atuongoze kwa hivyo ni chukumu la kila mmoja wetu tuweze kusoma Biblia na tuweze kusoma kwa unyenyekevu na kwa maombi na Mungu wa mbinguni atatupatia kuelewa zaidi na ndugu Samson langu ningependa kuongezea hivi je mtazamaji wetu jinsi na namna ambavyo unazidi kutuangalia kule nyumbani ni vipi ambavyo unaichukulia Biblia ni vipi ambavyo umejikita katika misingi ya Biblia je imani yako umeiweka wapi umeiweka katika yule mwandishi ambaye anaongea kinyume na Biblia umejikita katika muhubiri umejikita katika nafasi gani basi mimi ningependa kulingana na juma hili tungeweza kujikita katika Biblia na Biblia pekee basi tungeweza kupata yale ambayo Mungu anafanya nini anatukusudia la mwisho ukiangalia katika hicho kitabu tumesoma cha Waibrania 4 mstari wa 12 inazidi kusistiza kuwa mawazo yetu makusudio yetu yote yafikirie kuhusiana na nini na neno la Mwenyezi Mungu yani kumaanisha kuwa ninapotembea Yesu alikufa msalabani aliniokoa na ni huru hayo ndio mafikirio ambayo tunapaswa kufanya nini kuwa nayo bali si kuwa kinyume na hayo tutakuwa tumefanya nini tumeasi na hukumu hii inatungoja asante Asante ndugu Eli. Na uh, nadhani ni bora tuelewe kwamba tuchukulie Biblia kama kitu cha uraibu. Uh, sisi kama binadamu kuna vile vitu ambavyo tunapenda kufanya zaidi katika maisha yetu. Labda kuna chakula unapenda kula zaidi, kuna kinywaji unapenda kunywa, kuna ule mchezo unapenda kucheza. Iwapo utachukulia Biblia kama ule mchezo unaopenda kucheza zaidi, kile kinywaji chako kizuri kile chakula chako kizuri bila shaka utaweza kupata mwanga zaidi kuhusiana neno la Mwenyezi Mungu. Kwa hivyo ombi langu ni kwamba tuchukulie Biblia kama msingi wa maisha bora katika dunia. Tuchukulie Biblia kama njia mwafaka ya kutufanya tuwa karibu na Mwenyezi Mungu na kutondolea lawama nyingi zaidi na hata kuelewa zaidi ni yapi mema ya kufanya na ni yapi yasiyofaa machoni pa Mwenyezi Mungu. Hilo ndilo ombi langu kwa Mkristo, amtazamaji unayetazama pale nyumbani na unayetusikiliza uh, hii kauli ya usomaji wa Biblia. Asante. Asante. Uh, uh, kwa kumalizia na kwa kuzingatia yale wenzangu wamesema. Uh, kuna wakati unapata tunaanza kutaja waandishi chinzo wameandika ama chinzo wameeleza Biblia tunaonywa kuwa tusiseme fulani aliandika tusiseme yule aliandika hivi ama vile bali tutafute kile Mungu mwenyewe amekiandika katika Biblia hilo ni la muhimu na uh, kwa kuleta tu uh, wazo hili diweze kufika kwa kila mmoja wetu ukisoma Uh, constitution yetu kuna mahali inasema hivi na nataka niseme kwa lugha ya Kiingereza inasema the constitution is the supreme source of law in Kenya and therefore if there is any other source of law that is in place and that source of law is found to be inconsistent with the constitution then that source of law will be rendered null and void to the extent of its inconsistency. The same case applies here, that the Bible is the sole source of all that we want in this life. And if there is anything in this world that will give us anything else that is inconsistent with the Bible, then that thing should be rendered null and void to the extent of its inconsistency. And may the Lord bless you.
Amen. Kwa kumalizia naomba ndugu Eric aweze kutuombe. Ah uh, tuamini na tuombe. Baba Mwenyezi Mungu tunakuja mbele zako wakati huu tukiwa na wingi wa shukrani. Tunakushukuru sana kwa kutulinda kutoka Jumazima hadi Sabato yako ya leo. Baba tumejifunza leseni, tumeangalia uchambuzi wa Biblia. Tunaomba yale ambayo tumesoma kuhusiana na Biblia yaweze kutufaa katika maisha yetu. Tunapozidi katika ibada zingine za leo baba tunaomba uwe nasi hadi mwisho maana tumeomba tukiamini katika jina safi la Yesu um, mkombozi wetu. Amen. Sabbath once again. So our next song is going to be from our English hymnals, song number 86, 86, Oh Lord my God, how great thou art. So this song, personally according to me, it's teaching me, it's telling me how great our God is. So no matter what tribulations you go through, no matter what hardships you go through, just keep in mind, our God is so great. So at home, those who are listening to us, just remember, we will overcome this because nothing is impossible because our God is great. Oh Lord my God, when I know some wonder Take me home, what 
Kuru kumana ni mwema Santi kwa kutuongoza tulipo anza uh, Kipindi hichi baba Nelea kuwa pamoja na sisi Na vipindi ambavyo vinafuata baba Tuna kuomba uwe kiongozu wetu Tuomba machacho kutia kwa jina la yesu Ambaye ni mwambezu wetu Amen Hello children, my name is Teacher Flora. Our story today is entitled, Do You Love Me? Children have said, do you, do you love me? Is the topic of our story today. And I'm targeting H group 5 to 9. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for enabling us to be here today. As we share together your word, Father, may the Holy Spirit make use of us and guide us through the story. In Jesus' name I pray. <laughs> Children, my story I've said is entitled, Do You Love Me? And our memory first for today comes from the book of John 21, 6. It says, again Jesus said, do you love me? Take care of my sheep. Can we repeat the memory first, children? Again Jesus said, do you love me? Take care of my sheep. It comes from the book of John 21, 16. The story goes like this. Jesus, after crucifixion, Jesus, after crucifixion, had appeared twice to his disciples. And this time, Jesus appeared to the disciples in a different way. As they were in their small house, the disciples seated, one of his disciples named Peter was really in doubt because he had denied, remember Jesus three times before Jesus was crucified. So he didn't know whether Jesus had forgiven him because they have not talked to Jesus to know Jesus has forgiven him. Jesus, uh, Peter was not a happy man with his fellow disciples. So he told them, I want to go out and to the lake and fish because he didn't know how is Jesus feeling after he denied Jesus three times before crucifixion that he didn't know Jesus? Then, as evening came, 
Peter was set to go and fish. Some of the disciples decided to go with Peter fishing. That night they fished the whole night. They looked for fish the whole night and they could not catch the fish. Look at that. It was so disappointing. They were so tired. They felt it is time wasted. They could not imagine because fishing was their, the work they knew how to do best that they, were, they could not catch fish. When morning came, they decided to stop working and go back and rest because they were so tired. As they were coming towards the shore, they saw a man standing just next to the waters. And the man called out to them, Gentlemen, have you caught any fish? Then the disciples told the man, No, we have not, not at all. Then the man told them, Put your net to the right. And then they were like, Why is this person wanting to give us problems? We have been on the wreck throughout the night. We've not caught any fish. And now he's asking us to put our nets down again to the right. But because they, were, they said, okay, let us try what this man is telling us. Maybe it could be our luck this morning. They dropped their nets to the right hand of their boat. Guess what, children? It is just like a miracle happened. The net caught a lot of fish. The, the net was so heavy and they were surprised all night and only one touch of the right side and the fish is full, the net. Then as they were wondering on that, they looked at the man who had told them to roll their nets down. And then John told Peter, it is the Lord. John recognized the Lord. Remember Jesus had risen. And now Jesus is appearing at that time to them. When they were doing their fishing. Immediately Peter heard it was Jesus. It was the Lord. He just skipped out of the pot. Walked, went through the waters running to Jesus. When the other disciples followed dragging the fish along with the pot. When they reached at the saw, they found the man had lit fire and he was preparing breakfast because there was fish, he was roasting some fish there and there was bread. Then something funny is as much as they had all that fish, their net didn't break and the fish was so much, a catch that they have never had. You can imagine. So Jesus welcomed them, gave them the fish that he had roasted and the bread they shared. That was the breakfast that they were shared with Christ again. After they finished sharing the breakfast, Jesus turned to Peter and asked Peter an interesting question. Do you love me? What a question. A friend is asking you, do you love me? Your friend asking you such a question. Peter replied, Yes, Lord. You know I love you. Then Jesus answered, 
Peter. Feed my flock. After that, Jesus answering that quietly, again he looked at Peter a second time and asked Peter, do you really love me? Peter told Jesus, no, you, Lord, you know everything. And truly you know that I love you. Then Jesus had a second time told Peter, take care of my sheep. At that time, Jesus looked at Peter and asked Peter, do you really love me? Children, just imagine a friend asking you a question three times whether you love them. How would you feel? And yet you have assured this person you love them. Peter felt bad in his heart. He was hurt because it's at that time that Jesus was asking, do you love me? He started wondering, is it because I denied Jesus three times? Is it because he had not forgiven me. But then he had to give an answer to that question at that time that Jesus had, uh, Jesus had asked him whether he loved him. He replied, Yes, I love you, Lord. Then Jesus told Peter again, Take care of my sheep. Peter was not understanding why Jesus was doing all this. But then, Jesus asked this question because of one reason. He asked Peter that question so that the other disciples could know that Peter had for, uh, Jesus, the Lord had forgiven Peter. And then the other thing the Lord wanted to teach Peter was patience. Children, patience. We are always very fast in reacting. When our friend does something bad to us, we even want to fight them. We want to do things very fast without even knowing Maybe why was this thing happening? So, Jesus was teaching Peter patience. Remember, Jesus was asking Peter a question, do you love me? And Peter was answering very fast, even without thinking. So, Peter, Jesus was teaching Peter patience, sympathy, and forgiveness. That we should learn to forgive others when they do something wrong to us. They, we also have to, have to be very sympathetic to, and show love to others if we really love Jesus. That is the teaching that Jesus was trying to give to his disciples. So after Jesus finished doing that, he told Peter, follow me. So Peter knew the Lord had already forgiven him. And now today, children, we are being asked, if we really love the Lord, then we should serve God. And how are we going to serve God? By taking care of others. Amen? Amen, children? Can we repeat our memory first? Our memory first was coming from the book of John 21, 16. Which says, again, Jesus 
said, Do you love me? Take care of my sheep. And that is the end of our story today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for giving us a chance to listen to your word once more, for teaching us to be patient, to be, to be sympathizing with others, Lord. Sympathy should be part of us, which is a sign of love, and also to practice forgiveness all the time that we are praying around with our friends who make us annoyed, and also for us to ask for forgiveness when we miss them, Lord. May you fill us with the whole spirit so that we can walk in the feet of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.
Good morning, everyone back there at home. We thank God for giving us this wonderful Sabbath. It's not because of our wish, but because of his mercies. Um, today, um, Cheryl Otete, I'm going to take you through the real-time class lesson. So stay tuned to what I'm going to teach you. It's very important for today. So our topic today is going to be hanging on on God's apparent absence. Hanging on on God's apparent absence. Um, before I go into deep into the topic today, um, I like to share a story. Um, there was long ago there was a sailing ship, which um, there was a storm which occurred, and the ship was deserted in an island that no one knew where it was, and uh, unfortunately only one crew man was able to survive. Um, the man was really shocked with what was happening, but he gathered himself and decided to build a crude hut for himself. He gathered all the things that he had, the, the, that was left in the ship, and he built himself a hut and stayed there. So one day, as he was going for, to hunt for food and search for food for himself, he went and he was coming, as he was coming back home, he found out that from, the, from afar he could see a column of smoke and he ran very fast to his hut. To his utter surprise, his house was on fire. He was in despair, in distress. He didn't know what to do at that time. So he decided to sit down and wonder, God, did you, did you, did, have you just abandoned me or what? He was really out of his emotions. He decided to sleep beside um, his burning house, he didn't have anywhere to go now because he had nothing to hold on. The small heart that he had, he thought it was, it was enough to survive for his survival when he was still in that island because there was nobody there. Now the only thing that he had was gone. He slept, he had a sleepless night, he couldn't even find a comfort to sleep even. So early in the morning, he stroll, went to stroll to the sea, towards the sea. Then he saw a ship and a small boat which was coming towards his side. Then he was surprised to see that the captain was one of his trainee when he was doing the captain work. So he was like, how did you find me? And the captain said to him, yesterday we saw a smoke from coming from this island and that's how we were able to come, but you couldn't reach here because the storm was so strong. We had to shelter somewhere and come for you today. Do you notice something? This man was like, God, why have you taken the only thing that I'm hanging on? Why have you taken any, everything that I was using? But because of his heart, the way it burnt down, it was able to send signal to his friends who were looking for him and was caught. Let's go back to our memory text today. It comes from the book of Revelation 21.4, and it says, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Amen? So, um, our reference for the fundamental belief of this topic is Fundamental number eight, the great controversy. Each and every one of us is fighting the battle that, long, that began long time ago. It began in the Garden of Eden. From the book of Genesis 3.15, when man sinned, we began the great controversy. God knows that this fight is very tough. That's why he's here with us, whether you see him or not. And that's why he sent the Holy Spirit to guide us. So, sometimes we think that God has left us. But my dear friends, this is the time to hold on to God. Okay. I really like this lesson today has so many stories. There's another story of Dominic. Dominic was just from the funeral of her mother. Her mother was only 34 years old when he had passed, she has passed away. So... He came in the evening back to his home. He was wondering, because the people in the funeral were saying some words that didn't make sense to him and kept on carrying in his mind. 
Some, someone in the funeral read the book of Romans 8.28, which says, In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Another mentioned that his mother's death was God's, part, God's plan. So he was wondering, it's God's plan to take away my mom? Everything happens for the good of every... As in, he was really shocked of these words. Everything that was said did not bother him. But these two words really bothered him. Sorry. He was like, really God, are you sure you have a purpose for me? Because for him, her mother was everything. So this young man was in his room. You who, was there, who are there at home, what could you do to encourage this young man? Mm, this is a food of thought, you can think. Because there are many things that are going around his mind. He doesn't know whether to continue believing in God. He doesn't know he's confused at this moment. What can you do to help such a person? Okay. So, sometimes in this life that we are, we need to sit down and write things that God has done for you. Because, you know, at times we undergo so many trials and temptations, but you know, the time everything is okay, when you're enjoying yourself, this is the time to prepare. To prepare for the disasters that are going to come. When you're facing joy in your life, this is the time to prepare for the, for the things which you don't know. Because you don't know what the future holds for you. Everything happens for a reason, yes, and you have to be prepared. God allows everything to happen because he has the right purpose. Um, for example, when Jesus was being crucified, he was crying on the cross, Father, why have you abandoned me? Please help me. But there was no answer. Sometimes we pray, there's, the, there's no answer. But you see, God had prayed that time for God to remember him and save him not to die. But three days later, he was saved. He came out and resurrected. Sometimes our prayers can be a no because, because God knows that whatever you have prayed for, it's not his plan. God's plan is always the best. So there was always a no, and there's also, there's also an, a wait. God knew that he had to wait for the three days to pass so that his prayer can be answered. God answers our prayers because he knows what's best for you. If it's not good for you, then the prayer that you had prayed, maybe it did not suit you. God has greater plans for you. So sometimes we should always look up to God for everything when we think that God is not there. We should continue holding and hanging on to his presence. He's always there. He's actually, we don't, we're not able to see him. Because there's always a guiding of our soul. So we're supposed to look up to him, for he is greater than what we can think. Um, sometimes um, we end up being angry because God has not given you a promotion, given you anything. Maybe that promotion wasn't yours. There's something greater for you. So my friends, as you are home, during these trying times, we have coronavirus now. You think that God has abandoned you. God has left us like this. But this is a temptation that God wants us to go and be successful in it. That's why God is telling us to hang on unto him even during these trying times. That's why our topic today is hanging on on God's apparent absence. He's not absent, it's just a duration and he will surely show himself powerful. So um, I hope you have enjoyed the lesson today. So we can conclude with a word of prayer from the Almighty. Let's pray. Our kind and loving master, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for making us see that you are there even with though we cannot feel you, Father. Father, let us fight our battles well and let us remember you during these trying times, Father. Father, remember our children back at home. Let them be able to hang on to you during this apparent absence, Father. For you remember your children and be able to be with us, Father. Father, for those who need your help, give them, Father. Whatever I'm not prayed for, Father, intercede in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You
kizazi hichi ni chadabu nikilinganishe na nini wanadharau neno la Mungu pia na wajumbe wa Mungu mjumbe wa Mungu yana siku Asanteni wapendwa wale wanao tu 
Tazama kutoka maala popote ulimwenguni Ninawalika kwenye ibada ya siku ya leo Na kwanza ni kuwalika kwa ibada ya kwanza ambayo ni ibada ya kumuabudu mungu kwa njia ya saka na sadaka Kama kuna wakati mungu anaitaji saka na sadaka zetu ni sasa Kwa maana kanisa la mungu ulimwenguni Dina maitachi mengi ya kiwinjiristi Ndiyo maana naomba tuweze tunapo kutoa saka na sadaka zetu Naomba tuweze kutavakali Maneno ya mungu kutoka kwa kitabu cha kumbukumbu ya torati kumina sita Mustali wa kumina saba Bwana asema hivi Kila mtu na atoe kama awe savio kwa kadiri ya baraka bwa, kwa, ba, kwa, a, kwa kadiri ya baraka ya bwana nataka kusoma tena kila mtu na toe kama awe savio kwa kadiri ya baraka ya bwana mungu wako alivyo kupa Biblia inasema tuweze kuhesabu mibaraka yetu Tuhesabu mibaraka yetu hata hii mibaraka ambayo ni yawazi mibaraka ya kwamba wewe watu wengine wamekufa watu wengine wameathirika na ugonjwa huu wa corona finance lakini wewe yu mwingi wa afya Sijui ni kwa nini uwezi kutambua na kuhesabu baraka za Mungu kwa maisha yako sasa na uweze kumutolea kulingana na ile mibaraka Mungu amekukilimia katika maisha yako. Naomba tunapoingia kwa kipindi hiki cha matoleo ya kumwabudu Mungu kwa njia ya saka na sadaka utoe kulingana na vile ambavyo umebarikiwa kuonyesha ya kwamba kama utoi saka na sadaka unatangasia Mungu mimi Mungu uchanibariki wewe na mimi kama kwa kweli umeona Mungu amekubariki hasa wakati huu wa changa ya corona ninaomba uweze kuingia kwenye ibada kwa njia ya saka na sadaka sasa wimbo unapoendelea Na nambali na mahali utaweza kutuma pesa nambali imeweza kuwekwa hapo kuna nambali ya, ya account ya banki hapo utaweza kurusa pesa yako hapo na uweze kutuma uchumbe mfupi kwa treasurer wako ama kwangu mimi namba yangu itakuwa hapo e, pastor Joseph Matorangi namba yangu itakuwa hapo ili uweze kutujulisha vile ambavyo umetoa saka ni ngapi na, na sadaka ni ngapi Nasi kama kanisa tutaweza kushukuru na kukuandikia receipt ya kuonyesha tumepokea saka na sadaka kutoka kwako. Mungu awabariki tunapoendelea kutoa tufarichike na tuweze kufurahia wimbo unaokuja namna hii.
Wamefanikiwa na Yesu na hofu wataki dogo katika dhuruba katika mabombi yeye yuko nami Taratibu kwa uhakika uniongoza Hadi nifike nambo ya mto Wamefanikiwa na Yesu na hofu wataki dogo katika dhuruba katika mabombi yeye yuko nami Taratibu kwa uhakika uniongoza Hadi nifike nambo ya mto Unapokuwa na Yesu woga wasi wasi vinatoweka maana kwake kuna tumaini kuna hamani vinapatikana kwake bwana Yesu ndiye njia ya uzima Unapokuwa na Yesu woga wasi wasi vinatoweka maana kwake kuna tumaini kuna hamani vinapatikana kwake bwana Yesu ndiye njia ya uzima Wamefanikiwa na Yesu na hofu wataki dogo katika dhuruba katika mabombi yeye yuko nami Taratibu kwa uhakika uniongoza Hadi nifike nambo ya mto Wamefanikiwa na Yesu na hofu wataki dogo katika dhuruba katika mabombi yeye yuko nami Taratibu kwa uhakika uniongoza Hadi nifike nambo ya mto Wamefanikiwa na Yesu na hofu wataki dogo katika dhuruba katika mabombi yeye yuko nami Taratibu kwa uhakika uniongoza Hadi nifike nambo ya mto Asanteni sana kwaya kwa wimbo mzuri na naamini wimbo huo wa Siva umewesa kutubariki sisi wote na naamini wale ambao mmewesa kutoa siku ya leo Mungu asidi kuwabariki na wala Mungu wesa kutoa leo naomba Mungu awabariki ili siku nyingine nanyi mwese kumwabudu Mungu kwa njia ya saka na sadaka tuombe ili kwanza ibada yetu Mtakatifu, mtakatifu Mungu Baba. Masaa haya matakatifu tuomba uweze kuwa pamoja nazi utufundishe na tena ukutane kwa kila mmoja wetu kwenye mahitaji yake katika jina la Kristo mema na kuamini. Amen. Wapendwa niliona ya kwamba sabato iliyopita tuliweza kuwa na watu wengi uh, waliokuwa na tasama na waliokuwa pamoja nasi katika ushirika kwa njia ya mtandao ninaona ndugu yetu David Ward kutoka sehemu ya uh, nchi ya Qatar aliweza kuomba kanisa tuweze kumkumbuka kwa maombi kwa njia ya kipekee kwa sababu ya afya yake na wengine wote mnapoendelea kuwa na nasi kwenye ushirika huu kwa njia ya mtandao 
mahala popote mulipo ninawalika muweze kuwasiliana nasi namba yangu ya simu mimi mchungaji itawekwa hapo ili tuweze kuwasiliana nawe kama una mahitaji ya kipekee unahitaji tuweze eh, ku, kuomba pamoja ama tuende kusungumza saidi na kualika nambari yangu ya simu imewekwa hapo tuweze kuwasiliana na wewe kwa njia ya hiyo zimu ya lununu siku ya leo uchumbe wetu unatoka kwenye kitabu cha Ruth moja mstari wa kwanza mpaka tatu. Bwana asema hivi Ikawa samani sa Wahams walipoamua kulikuwa na njaa katika inji na akaondoka mtu mmoja wa Bethlehem ya Yuda naye akaenda kukaa katika inji ya Moab yeye na mke wake na wanawe wawili mstari wa pili biblia inasema na jina la mtu huyo alikuwa ni Elimeleki na jina la mkewe alikuwa Naomi na majina ya wanawe wawili Malon na Kilion wote walikuwa wametoka katika inchi ya Bethlehem ya Yuda nao wakafika katika inchi ya Moab wakakaa huku mstari wa tatu biblia inasema akafa Elimelek mumewe Naomi na yule mwanamke akasalia na wanawe wawili nao wakaoa wake katika Uh, katika wanawake wa Moab na jina la mmoja aliitwa Olfa na jina la wapili aliitwa Ruth nao wakakaa huku yapata miaka kumi. Biblia inaendelea kusema mstari wa tano wakafa na Mahalon na Kilion wote wawili na huyo mwanamke akawa amefiwa na wana, wanawe wawili na mume wake pia wakati wa Hams walipoamua ndio topic ya mahubiri yetu wakati wa Hams walipoamua je ni kwa nini biblia hii inaanza na msemi huu ya kwamba samani zile wakati wa Hams walipoamua ni kama tunakumbushwa kuna wakati wa Hams walikuwa wanaamua walikuwa wanatawala na kuwaongoza wana wa Mungu watoto wake aliyowakomboa tena inatukumbusha wakati huo ni lazima tuweze kufahamu kwa maana ni wakati mambo na matukio fulani yalitukia ambayo tunafaa kuchifundisha sisi tunaoishi wakati kama huu wakati huo wa Wahams twaelezwa kwa wale ambao wamesoma vitabu vingine vya Biblia tunaelezwa ya kwamba wakati huo wa Wahams walipokuwa wanatawala walipokuwa wanawaongoza wana wa Mungu kabila la Yuda pale Bethlehem wakati huo ulikuwa ni wakati wa giza nene wakati wa Hams walipokuwa wanaamua ilikuwa ni wakati kila mtu alikuwa anafikiria afanye nini na anaenda mbele na anafanya hivyo hivyo wakati wa Hams walikuwa wanaamua akukua na watu waliokuwa wanachali sheria na mwongozo wa neno la Mungu licha ya Mungu kuwaongoza licha ya Mungu kuwaelekesha licha ya Mungu kuwaonyesha namna ya kuishi 
kwa miaka kadhaa wakati wa Hams walipokuwa wanaamua when the churches ruled wakati huo kila mtu alikuwa anafanya jinsi ambavyo amefikiria kwa hivyo the time of the churches was a period characterized with a lot of spiritual darkness with a lot of waywardness with a lot of individualistic framework and philosophy with a lot of self-centeredness with a lot of disregard for God's will and God's word wakati huo huo pas ulipokuwa namna hiyo ndio wakati biblia inasema wakati kama huo ndio wakati biblia inasema kulitokea njaa kuu katika Bethlehem Bethlehem ya Juda Bethlehem inchi ambayo inachulikana ni inchi ya mkate God's people go and check the bible dictionary utajua ya kwamba Bethlehem means a land of bread kwa hivyo hapa kuna maneno mtasamaji mwenzangu mpendo hapa kuna maneno ya kwamba wakati wa Hams wanaamua when the churches ruled there was severe famine in the land of bread Bethlehem kwa hivyo njaa ilikuwa ni nini njaa iliyokuja in the land of Bethlehem a land known of God's providence full of prosperity full of bread wakati njaa inakuja Bethlehem kwa watu wa Mungu inaonyesha hiyo njaa ilikuwa ni kipoko kwa wana wa Israeli because of their self-centeredness individualistic framework and philosophy of life so wakati huo wakati watu wa Mungu walikuwa bila kutambua hamli na sheria za Mungu Mungu akaleta kiboko ya njaa kali njaa iliyokuwa ni kubwa katika eneo la inji yake Bethlehem ya Yuda God's people Tulisema hapo awal ya kwamba inawezekana Mungu aweze kuruhusu mambo fulani kutokea ili watu wa Mungu waweze kutasama juu hili watu wa Mungu waweze kumkumbuka Mungu hili watu wa Mungu waweze kukumbuka mahara popote ambao wameotea ambao wamepotea This famine was a symbol of God's judgment over Bethlehem in Judah the land of bread What happened wakati njaa ilitokea kuna mtu kuna familia moja familia ya mtu anayeitwa Elimeleki pamoja na mke wake Naomi pamoja na watoto wake Mahalon na Kilion walipoona njaa imekuwa kali pale nyumbani Bethlehem wakaamua sasa atuwezi kukufia hapa tumesikia kuna chakula Moab hebu tuondoke tukaelekea Moab hili tukaweze kuepuka kifo kutokana na njaa hapa Bethlehem the land of bread watu wa Mungu nataka nikukumbuse siku ya leo unaweza toroka unaweza toroka simba ukakutane na ndofu unaweza toroka changa moja iliyo ndogo ukutane na changa iliyo kubwa mbele yako watch what happened but before ni kuambie what happened ni vema niweze kukukumbusha mambo machache juu ya Moab kwa maana familia hii waliondoka Bethlehem 
wakaelekea Moab. Je, Moab ilikuwa ni inji ya aina gani? Watu wa Mungu, wale ambao mnasoma Biblia saidi, naomba muweze 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 kukumbuka wakati mmoja kitabu cha hesabu 20 mstari wa moja wakati mmoja kabila ya Moab ni mocha wapo ya makabila ambayo walikataa wana wa Israel wasipitie kwenye inchi yao walipokuwa wanaelekea nyumbani Canaan wakiondoka Misri na kwa sababu hiyo Mungu akaagiza wana wa Israel kwa sababu watoto wa Moab waliwakatasa msipite katika inchi yao kuanzia leo msiwe na uhusiano wa wote na wa watu maneno hayo utayapata katika kitabu ya kumbukumbu ya Torati 23 mstari wa tatu mpaka sita. kwa hivyo tangu kalile tangu samani Mungu alikuwa amepeana muongozo kwa wana wa Israeli wasiweze kuwa na urafiki wasiweze kuwakaribia Moab therefore my friend my brother my sister Moab katika somo la leo Moab inasimamia dhambi Moab inasimamia dhambi inasimamia inji ya dhambi inji ambayo Mungu amesema tusiweze kujihusisha nayo so Moab in this text is a symbol of sin and sinfulness Nataka nikukumbushe ya kwamba Mungu alisema hata hekalu wasiweze kukaa pamoja na watu wa Moab. Nenda ukasome. Nenda ukasome Biblia. Na utakapopata nafasi usome vitabu vingine e, e, ya kuonyesha ya kwamba hakukua na uhusiano mwema kati ya Moab na Israel. Lakini wakati wa shida familia ya Elimelek wakafunika macho yao wakasema afadhali kuishi katika nchi ya dhambi afadhali kuondoka maana Mungu ananihitaji nielekee kwa nchi ya dhambi ni afadhali kukaa kwa nchi ya dhambi bora tu tumbo yangu iwe imejaa Many times some of us We have disappointed God by abandoning our faith just because of the best kings. Hivyo ndivyo ilivyokuwa Elimelek akasema afadhali afadhali kuwa mahali kuna dhambi lakini nipate chakula huko. Afadhali nikae na wenye dhambi. Afadhali nifunje maagizo ya Mungu ya kwamba si vema muweze kutangamana na wana wa Moab afadhali nifunje hamuli hiyo na agiso hiyo afadhali nisikufe njaa afadhali nisihusishe na watu ambao Mungu amekatasa mimi lakini nipate chakula pale these are the wrong choices we make in life hii ni baadhi ya uchaguzi mbaya ambao tunafanya na nataka nikuambie siku ya leo ya kwamba utakapo make choices of that nature there are consequences of your choices there are consequences of your choices watu wa Mungu nataka tuweze kukumbuka Mungu amepeana maagizo amepeana maagizo ya kila aina amepeana maagizo ya chakula ambao tunafaa kufanya nini kukula Mungu ametoa maagizo namna ya kumwabudu ibada ya kweli ni gani Mungu ametoa maagizo namna ya kuishi katika jamii na kufanya mambo yote iwe ni mambo ya usafi Mungu ametoa maagizo hii mambo ya sanitizers ukisoma kitabu cha Walawi utaona Mungu akihimiza watu wawe wanaoga na kunawa sawa sawa Hakuna kitu katika Biblia ambacho Mungu hajatuelezea. Kwa hivyo watu wa Mungu, Mungu ametoa maagizo yake juu ya our social life, 
juu ya kumtafuta uso wake juu ya uh, kuinteract katika community zetu Mungu amesema hata maagizo namna ya kukula na kitu cha kukula na kitu ambacho haifai kukula Lakini rumwengu wa sasa watu wanakula nyoka ndio delicacy Watu wanakula snails ndio delicacy Watu wanakula eh, hii kitu kinaitwa nguruwe ndio delicacy Mungu amesema kuleni chakula ambacho ni vegetarian kuleni nuts na fruits lakini watu hawataka kufanya now let me see god's people go with me katika mstari wa tatu uweze kuona wakati elimelek na mke wake naomi walipoamua kuelekea kwenye inji ya moab inji ambayo Mungu aliwakatasa wasiweze kuwa na alliance as now what happened with this people of God Ni nini lilifanyika wakati walihasi maagizo ya Mungu ya kuto interact na ku make alliances na watu wa Moab what happened to this family Watu hawa Biblia inasema Elimelek ambaye ni kiongozi wa nyumba ambaye ndiye kichwa ya nyumba ambaye alifanya uamuzi e, kama pumbafu uamuzi mubaya uamuzi wa kuelekeza familia yake yote kumfuata kwa uamuzi mbaya mpaka nchi ya Moab nchi ya dhambi maana Mungu hakutaka waweze kwenda huyo alikuwa wa kwanza kuaga dunia Biblia inasema Alitoroka kifo Bethlehem kifo ya nini kifo ya njaa lakini hapa ndio alipata chakula pale Moab ndio alipata maisha mazuri pale Moab kulikuwa na maji chochote alichokuwa anataka kilikuepo pale Moab lakini tasama yes alipata kifo chake pale Moab inchi ya dhambi inchi ambayo Mungu aliwaambia wa wasiweze kukaa wala kukaribia. Hiyo istoshe. Watoto wake nao walipofika hapo baba yao amekufa ameaga dunia. Watoto wake Mahalon na Kilion wakaona sasa wasichana wa Moab ni warembo sawa sawa. Wakafanya alliances kupitia kwa ndoa. Wakawachukua wakawa Olfa wakawa um, um, wakawa uh, Olfa na Ruth walipowaoa hao wakawa mabibi zao na hiyo ikaongeza uchungu kwake Mungu ya kwamba wameweza kuweka intimate alliance through marriage na watu ambao Mungu alisema wasiweze kuungana nao Biblia inasema walipofanya agano hilo kwa njia ya ndoa Biblia inasema nao vijana hao wawili Mahalon na Kilion wakaaga dunia Tasama picha hii Nyumba ambayo ilikuwa imechaa watoto sasa hakuna watoto because of your wrong choices. Nyumba ambao ilikuwa imejaa wanaume sasa hakuna wanaume kwa maana ya uamuzi na uchaguzi ambao au mpendezi Mungu. God's people. Ukabaki wanawake watatu wanawake wachane katika nyumba taabu ikaongezeka juu ya taabu ingine na ukisoma vizuri juu ya maisha na atima yake mchane katika agano la Biblia utasangaa taabu walisopitia wanawake hawa watatu wakiwa wachane God's people familia hii ilitoroka kifo sasa wamepata kifo maradufu watu wa Mungu 
Makosa yao hawa watu ulikuwa ni nini? Makosa yao hawa watu ulikuwa ni nini? Hili nazi tuweza kuchifundisha kutoka kwa changamoto hii iliyowapata familia yake Elimelek na mke wake Naomi. Tatizo yake ya kwanza ni kwamba hawa watu waliamua kutoka mbele za Mungu kwa maana pale Bethlehem kulikuwa na ibada ya kweli kulikuwa wanamwabudu Mungu asubuhi na mjana pale Bethlehem Mungu alikuwepo licha ya shida na changamoto ya kukosa chakula na kuwa na njaa kuwa God was there na hapo ndipo Mungu aliwaitachi licha ya changamoto licha ya tahabu silisokuwa pale hapo Bethlehem ndipo Mungu aliwaitachi waweza kufumilia kwa maana wanaofumilia mbele za Bwana Mungu uwaonekania The first mistake they did they failed in waiting God's people wakakosa tumaini wakakosa imani kwa Mungu Mungu aliyowatoa babu zao Misri Mungu aliyowaongoza Mungu ambaye amekuwa akiwalinda hapo Bethlehem kila wakati hakukuwa na njaa Bethlehem wakasahau huyo Mungu sasa wakasema wacha waende waweze kujisaidia God's people The greatest the greatest disaster is a disaster to you when you lack faith and trust before God your maker and creator Sijui utaishi maisha gani Sijui utaisha maisha gani Sijui utakaa namna gani mpendwa Unapopitia kwenye changamoto changamoto kali zinazofanana moto unaokula na kuwaka moto mkali unapopitia kwenye changamoto sijui maisha yako itakuwa namna gani utakapoondoa mkono wako kutoka kwa kumshika Mungu wako kutoka kwa kushikilia imani yako utakapo hama imani yako utakapo hama na kumwacha Mungu wako licha ya changamoto unazopitia sijui mpendo maisha yako yatakuwa namna gani hawa watu shida yao ilikuwa walisahau ahadi za Mungu ahadi za Mungu katika kitabu cha Zaburi 46 mstari wa kumi inayosema ngojeni kwa Bwana ngojeni hivyo hivyo na mtajua kwa hakika mimi ni Mungu wako shida ya familia hii walisahau na wakakataa kungojea kwa Bwana Bwana anayesema katika Saburi 23 mstari wa kwanza Bwana anayesema Bwana ni mchungaji wangu sitapungukiwa na kitu wakasahau ahadi hii ya kipekee kutoka kwa Mungu Waliposahau ya kwamba Mungu anaweza kuwalinda hawataweza kupungukiwa kitu wakaamua kuanza kuchisaidia kwa kuacha inchi ya agano kwenda kwa inji ambayo Mungu alisema wasiweze kutangamana nao God's people shida ya watu ilikuwa ni Saburi 49 mstari wa 15 Biblia inasema mimi sitaweza kuwasahau lakini wao wakasahau ahadi hii ya kwamba licha ya njaa katika nchi yao licha ya changamoto katika nchi yao inchi Mungu aliwaambia waweze kukaa waweze kumngocha pale waweze kumwabudu pale wakaona ya kwamba Mungu amewasahau lakini katika kitabu cha Isaya 49 verse 15 Biblia inasema sitawasahau kamwe mwanadamu hata mama yako ataweza kukusahau lakini mimi Mungu muumba wako sitaweza kukusahau wakasahau ahadi hii ya ajabu God's people Kitabu cha Saburi 145 mstari wa 15 mpaka 16 Biblia inasema macho yote yanayomtazama Mungu Mungu uwapa chakula 
macho yote yanayomtasama Mungu Mungu uwapa chakula soma Saburi 145 verse 15 and 16 Kiasi ya kwamba hawa hii familia yake limeleki na mke wake Naomi wakasahau ahadi hii inayosema tukimtasama Mungu tukimlilia Mungu tukienda kwake atutapungukiwa kitu bali tutapokea vyote kulingana na mapenzi yake watu wa Mungu inapotamatisha mahubiri haya ninajua ya kwamba nyote kama mimi mnapitia changamoto katika maisha yenu changamoto sinaso ongezeka kulingana na ugonjwa huu wa corona virus ni changamoto singina ambazo simewafanya watu wengine kuacha imani wengine wameenda kuchisaidia kupata rishe kwa njia ambazo asumpendezi Mungu tuchifundishe the consequences that will be yours when you are born faith in a god and fearer najua wengine tumepoteza kazi lakini lazima tukule lazima tulipe nyumba najua wengine ni wagonjwa saidi ya corona virus tuna ugonjwa katika mili yetu ugonjwa ambao umetusumbua miaka kadhaa afya yetu si bora mpendwa naomba uweze kuweka tumaini yako kwa Yesu na naomba uweze kushikilia imani yako kwa maana utakapoendelea kusikilia imani yako Mungu atasikia kilio chako na atakuja kwako kwa wakati unaofaa it is never too late for god to come and manage your situation now servant of god hawa watu familia ya limelek wakaweza wakaweza kusahau hayo yote wakaweza kungojea kwa bwana ndio maana kitabu cha patriarchs and prophets page 493 inasema ya kwamba Mungu atawatendea mambo makuu kwa wale wake wote wanaomtumainia God will perform great things to all who trust in him Kitabu hicho kinaendelea kusema ya kwamba God will help his children in every merchants if they will place their confidence in him and faithfully obey him kitabu hicho patriarch san paul kinasema ya kwamba mungu atawasaidia watoto wake kwa kila emergency ya aina yoyote kama hao watoto wake wataendelea kumtumainia na wataendelea kuwa imara kwake na wataendelea kumtii yeye atawasaidia kutoka kwa whatever emergency in their life This is the God I recommend to you today. Huyu ndiye Mungu ninayependekeza kwako siku ya leo na sasa. Mungu ambaye amesema utakapomtumainia, utakapomwamini, yes. Utapungukiwa na kitu bali utapokea vyote. Wana wa Mungu. Kilichofanya inchi ya mkate maana yake Bethlehem kupiwa na pigo la njaa ni wakati watu waligeuka wakaanza kutembea mbali na Mungu watu wakaanza kutafuta mapenzi yao watu wakaanza kufanya vile wanavyofikiria na vile wanavyopenda na vile wanavyofurahia wakati huo wakati katika hali ya kiroho ya watu wa Mungu iridimia ikaenda chini I, wakati huo Mungu akaleta kiboko ya njaa what 
is required. Face your crisis with confidence. Face your crisis with confidence in Jesus because this is only the portion of all the saints, those who trust in God. Katika nyimbo tunasoimba kuna wimbo unaosema it is so sweet to trust in Jesus wimbo huo wimbo huo mpendwa unanipatia nguvu kwa maana unapomtazama unapo unapomtegemea unapomtegemea Bwana unatulia katika neno lake na unapata pumziko katika ahadi zake ambazo ni ahadi za kweli na kwa hakika utafarijika ukiwa unaweka tumaini yako kwa Yesu Kristo huu ni wakati ambapo twakumbushwa katika mstari wa sita katika mstari wa sita ndipo alipoondoka yeye na wakwese ili kurudi kutoka nchi ya Moab maana uko katika nchi ya Moab amesikia ya kwamba Bwana amewajia watu wake na kuwapa chakula Huyu ni Naomi baada ya kupoteza mume wake na baadaye baada ya kupoteza watoto wake wawili na kubaki na watoto wajane watoto wachanga hawana hata mtoto naye amebaki mchane nyumba iliyokuwa imejaa wanaume sasa hakuna mwanaume hata mmoja yeye aliyetoka Bethlehem akiwa amejaa na watu na amebarikiwa na watu na mume na watoto sasa akasikia kule nyumbani Bethlehem Mungu amewachalia chakula kimekuwa kingi na akaona sasa katika hii inji nilitoroka ili niweze kujiokoa nilitoroka ili niweze kuokoa maisha yangu badala yake nimepata makuu katika hii inji afadhali nirudi nyumbani nirudi Bethlehem Nirudi nyumbani, nirudi mahala Mungu alisema nikae, nirudi mahali kuna ibada ya kweli, nirudi mahala ambapo nitakuwa na wakati mwema wa kusali. Naye alipoamua akarudi Bethlehem. Akarudi akiwa ni mwanamke mjane, akiwa amepungukiwa akiwa masikini kuliko vile ambavyo aliondoka Bethlehem watu wa Mungu this are the dire consequences of living where God desires to have you haya ndiyo matokeo yanayotupata wakati tunakosa kumtumainia Mungu na kuama mahali anatuhitaji na badala yake tunaelekea mahala Mungu atuhitaji mahala Mungu amekataa ndiko tunataka kwenda kwa maana tumeamua kufanya hayo kwa mapenzi yetu haya ndio safari haya ndio machuto yanayotupata sisi watu wake haya ndio machuto yatakayo nipata mimi mchungaji nitakapohama nyumba ya Mungu nitakapohama kufanya mapenzi ya Mungu nitakapohama kutafuta uso wa Mungu nitakapohama utukufu wake mimi mchungaji nitakapohama uso wa Bwana nitakapohama kanisa lake ninajua mambo kama haya yatanipata ninajua mambo kama haya yatanipata mpendwa ninajua pendo mtasamaji wakati huu ninaomba nikupe nafasi uweze kuchiochi ndani ya moyo wako 
Uweze kuona ni jinsi gani umetanga mbali na Mungu wako. Ni jinsi gani ambavyo umechitavutia makuu kulingana na mapenzi yako bila mapenzi ya Mungu. Uweze kuamua leo urudi nyumbani. Kile Naomi alichofanya cha muhimu kuliko wama nyumbani ni uamuzi wake Naomi kurudi nyumbani. Kile alichofanya cha muhimu Naomi licha ya matatizo na shida na changa alisokumbana nazo katika nchi ngeni nchi ya Moab uamuzi aliofanya uamuzi wa kipekee uamuzi wa muhimu ni uamuzi wa kurudi nyumbani leo hii sijui umetanga mbali na Mungu kiasi gani mimi ni mwanadamu siwezi kujua lakini Mungu muumba wako anajua nakupa nafasi hii wakati wimbo huu unapoendelea ku, uh, kucheza uweze kuchiochi ndani ya moyo wako nawe kama Naomi uweze kuamua leo hii kurudi nyumbani nyumbani kwa Yesu Kristo najua wenda ulikuwa ni mwana youth ukaama kanisa ulipoama kanisa ukaondoka huko nje umetembea maisha nje ya Yesu yamekufundisha maisha nje ya Yesu Kristo umetosheka nayo sasa unataka kurudi nyumbani my sister my brother rudi nyumbani ndio uamuzi wa kipekee utakaofanya siku ya leo Nijua wenda wewe ni baba na Mungu amekubariki na watoto hapo nyumbani wenda hata wachukuu uko nao Mungu amekubariki na muke mwema lakini wewe kama kichwa kwa nyumba umeongoza familia yako yote kuama kwa Yesu kuama mahali pana sarama kuama mahali pana amani kuama mahali Yesu anakuhitaji wewe baba ambaye umeongoza familia yako kuondoka kwa Yesu naomba sasa uweze kuwafanya uamuzi wa kipekee uweze kuwarechesha nyumbani na nyumbani siku ingine bali ni nyumbani kwa Yesu Kristo kwa Yesu kuna kituo salama kwa Yesu kuna amani wenda umeenda huko nje umeteseka na maisha ya dunia magocho ndio hayo umeteseka na maisha ya dunia ya kula na kutumia madawa ya kulevya maisha hayo hayana amani kwa maana yanakusumbua kila wakati na kila siku leo hii ndugu yangu leo hii dada yangu kama umeama umeenda Moab Moab ya madawa ya kulevya naomba ufanye uamuzi wa kipekee leo uweze kurudi nyumbani na nyumbani ni kwa Yesu Kristo na utapata amani wapendwa sijui ni changamoto gani unayopitia sijui ni changamoto gani unayopitia licha ya hiyo changamoto hakikisha uko nyumbani mwake Yesu Kristo huko pamoja na Yesu Kristo kwa maana wapendwa ni bora zaidi kuumia kupata macharibu kupata matatizo kupata changamoto ni afadhali kuwa na hizo zote lakini uwe na Yesu aliye mtetesi wako kwa maana hata kama utapoteza haya maisha umewekewa usima wa milele ndani ya mwana Yesu Kristo therefore god's people as this song is on you better be in the land of famine in the land that belongs to the Lord your God than to be in a place of prosperity without the presence 
of God. You're gonna be in a land with famine, in the presence of God, where God desires to have you to be, than to dwell in a land of plenty, a land of idolatry, a land that takes you away from the love of God. Afadhali, wishi katika inchi ya changamoto, wishi kwenye matatiso jungu nzima, kuliko kuelekea kwa maisha ambayo kuna raha, kuna vingi, lakini hakuna Yesu pale. Afadhali kuwa na changamoto mbele za Mungu na ndani ya Yesu kuliko kwenda mahala hakuna changamoto lakini kuna ibada ya sanamu na kuna mambo ambayo hayamfurahishi Mungu hapa mahali ulipo hata kama utakuwa umetulia jinsi gani God's people it is so sweet to trust in Jesus just take him by his word. Just rest in his promises. You'll be glad. You'll be glad to trust in Jesus. Kama unaitaki upatiso, atuwezi suia upatiso kwa mana kuna corona, kwa mana atujui kesho yako itakuwa na muna gani, nina kupa na fasi. Uweza kutuma uchumbe mfupi, Kwa hiyo nambari yangu ya zimu. Kwa hiyo nambari yangu ya rununu. Ya kwamba ungependa mafundiso saidi na ungependa upatiso wa machi. Ii tuweza kukuanda kwa ajiri ya kurudi kwa Yesu Kristo mara ya pili. Kwa mana umefanya wa muzi wako, naomba niweze kuomba pamocha na awe. Naomba niweze kuomba pamocha na awe mpedwa. Tuome na tuamini. Mutakatifu, mutakatifu mungu baba. Imependeza machoni pako tena ututumie kama chombo ya kuleta njiri ya mlele kwa njia ya mutandao na kuweza kufikia watu wako hawa wote. Mungu, licha ya changamoto zira mbaso watu wako wanapitia Licha ya maumifu katika maisha yao. Yesu naomba. Wakuone uko pamoja nao. Kwa mana ni afadhali kuwa na changamoto mbele zako. Kuliko kukosa changamoto mbali na wewe. Yesu Kristo. Naombea toto wako huyo ambaye ya kwa katika mwanya wa wamuzi. Anapo amua akupende na kukupokea kama mwakoso maisha yake. Naomba umuongoze ili aweze kufanya uamuzi uliobora. Uamuzi wakulechea nyumbani. Na nyumbani si pengine tu. Bali nyumbani ni kwako Yesu Kristo. Mahala tutakuwa salama. Mahala tutakuwa na amani. Yesu naomba umuongoze. Huyo dada, huyo ndugu. Ili kristo anapofanya wamusi huu. Aondoke kwenye maisha yake. Ambayo haya kufraishi ata kidogo. Richa ya ra. Sila naso fraia pande ile. Mungu aondoke pale. Chinsi vile na umi ya liondoka. Na akarejia nyumbani. Mungu. Kuna watoto waku wengi ambao wamekukili kama mwakoso wa maisha yao, na wanaitaji upatiso wa match, jinsi ulivyo patiswa, na akikisho ya kwamba, wamekupokea kama mwakoso wa maisha yao, naomba hao, watakapo pokea nambali hii ya simu, mungu, wapatia ujaziri, wakutupa abari, ya kwamba wanaitaji upatiso huo, Nasi utupe nafasi 
tuweze kuandaa waweze kuingia kwa upatizo huo na Yesu uwatayarishe kwa upatizo wa, wa roho na uwatayarishe kwa usima wa milele Mungu atutaweza kuwasahau wale wenzetu ambao wanaendelea kuathirika kwa sababu ya changa hili la corona Mungu ulimwengu inaombaleza ulimwengu inalia Yesu naomba usikie kilio cha watoto wako na kama kuna dhambi ambayo tumefanya machoni pako naomba utuondolee laana hii ili watu wako wawe na nafasi ya kukuabudu na kukuamini na kuwa tayari kwa ajili ya maelezo yako mara ya pili Mungu nakabidi waonjo wote wa corona virus mikononi mwako nakabidi familia sawa mikononi mwako Mungu uwape faraja kwa maana wewe ndiwe na ifarishi. kuna shida na changamoto zingine ambazo zimetokea kwa sababu ya uonjo huu wa corona watoto wako wamepoteza kazi watoto wako wengine wana chakula watoto wako wengine hawajui wafanye nini kwa sababu ya hali mbaya walio nayo sasa Mungu naomba utumie wapendo wako wale ambao umewabariki wanao kidogo wape upendo ili waweze kushare na wale ambao hawana na kwa utukufu wa china lako uchibu maombi ya wale hawana kupitia kwa wale ambao umewatunukia na kidogo na umesema tuweze kula kwa pamoja na kwa upendo Mungu kabidi tunakabidi nchi yetu ya Kenya mikononi mwako madaktari na wote wanaofanya kazi pale hospitalini hata wale wanao supply vyakula na, ma, na hata materials zinazohitajika pale hospitalini sio hapa Kenya tu bali ulimwenguni kote Mungu uwalinde kutoka kwa changamoto ya corona na kutoka kwa shida zozote sinaso uh, sinaso sababishwa na uonjo huu wa corona. Saidi Mungu tuomba urejee mara ya pili duniani. Na hata hivyo Mungu uje kwa haraka. Hii dunia tumechoka. Mungu uche na utuondoe hapa. Tuende nyumbani mahala palipo salama kwa maana ndilo hombi letu katika china la Kristo aliye bwana mkombozi wetu amen na Mungu awabariki Mungu awabariki tuonane tena sabato ijayo thank you
Shinda mo 